Mr. Francis, uh, we heard in the preamble, like uh, according to a report, the first governance uh, report uh, uh, released by the Mo Ibrahim Foundation, that was in 2019, we saw some, uh, of course, uh, positive uh, strides recorded by African continents regarding governance, but he made mention of the fact that there is lack in democracy and political governance. And today we want to discuss further the governance structure or system in Africa as a governance expert. So what do you think uh, can uh, be done uh, at this juncture to reshape uh, the governance system or structure across Africa to meet uh, the, the challenges or the, the international, the changes or the drastic shift at the international arena regarding politics and uh, governance as a whole? Thank you. Thank you for having me once again. Um, thank you for that question. Can you hear me clearly? Unfortunately, yeah, we are having some interruptions. Uh, I'll be coming back to you, Mr. Francis. Just to remind our viewers joining us this day or this time that uh, this is uh, the program views on the continent on the Pan-African television. And we are analyzing governance system or structure in Africa, looking at how African governments are ready to reshape the governance system to meet uh, the uh, uh, international uh, the challenges or the changes at the international arena. If it's uh, all good with Mr. Francis, we can write on uh, with uh, the, the question on, on how uh, African governments can, of course, uh, uh, reshape the governance system across countries in Africa. The differences and variations, but generally, there are characteristics you can see in them. You see, you see primitive accumulation of wealth by politicians using state resources. You, you also see, um, you also see weak uh, and then you see a lot now going back to the report you talked about yes there has been there has been a, a tremendous improvement in, in 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 governance across african countries uh, especially in areas of um um you know let me put it this way globalization has made it easy there are a lot of things that has come in in our in our governance processes you talk about budget before it wasn't so sophisticated as it is now you see people making good policies having uh, robust um, contributions and uh, policy directions that government leverage on you see literally technology coming in but then those things are not really translating to development that's the issue they are not really... okay can i continue the, those those issues are not really uh, I'm translating to development, and they are not really making the the life of the common man so enjoyable and so at ease. That those are the issues. So the, the the report is correct to say that there has been development, but then also the report noted that there are the, on the issue of democratization that um, African governance processes has not been so uh, um, desirable. I agree partly with with that assertion that we have not been so much um, democratic. But then the question is, is the goal for African societies to become democratic or is the goal for African society to develop? If the goal is for us to develop, then is democracy the way for us to develop? If yes, what aspect of democracy? So I don't want us to focus so much on how, how well we have done or we have performed in trying to democratize governance process in Africa. I would rather want us to, to be focused on how has this helped the, the, the social development, the uh, socioeconomic reality. Of course, democratic institutions, but of course, let's start by actually uh, pinpointing or highlighting those factors that will characterize uh, a good government. Thank you. Thank you for um, um, that. I would come in to say that... Um, Africa as a continent has the culture. We agree. Africa as a continent has begun on the path of development. We agree. Africa as a continent cannot operate in isolation without relating to countries around, around it, which now points us to the geopolitical context in which African governance operates. We agree. But 
what position is Africa taking? You, you, you might decide to be the market. You might decide to be the supplier of raw material. You might decide to be the producer of the goods that you have the raw material to produce. When you take all these positions, challenges will come. Those that have been pro, uh, uh, benefiting from your inactivities may want to fight back. How do you position yourself? So if you if you just check these four four uh, expressions I've made now, you realize that is the issue of first of all the the visionary leadership of the of the political leadership country, and then Africa as a continent when they they converge under the auspices of AU or whatever platform they have. So the the point is, Africa cannot expect that it will develop in isolation. The development Africa will attain will come from its interaction with the realities within and the realities that are external to its existence. Then, in the sense that they will check the human capacity available to them. They will check the raw materials available to them. They will check the areas of thread where they have comparative advantages that they explore to, to, to reach their potential. So that's, with, that's part of the things within. Now, externally, you don't just go to become friends with anybody because they were friends of your father. You, you, you decide whether your friendship with this person speaks good to the vision you need. That now brings the problem. What if there is no vision? So the international relations and the foreign policy of African nations will be unguarded, directionless, and fruitless to its people. But then, if there is a vision, when, when Africa wakes up in the morning like a man going into the market or anything, every other activity, who they greet, who they don't greet, who they decide to associate with, the policies they adopt, the, the wars they fight, or the ones they don't fight, will be decided by the role that that decision or action will play in the pursuit of the vision for development they have for their people. So from this letter I've said now, the most important thing is Africa must develop visionary leadership. Where it is existing, it must be sustained and protected. Where it is not existing, the people must fight to make sure that they have visionary political leadership. That's one. Secondly, institutionalization. My, my good friend made mention of uh, when, uh, before now, when the state was meant to protect certain people and, and not serve the, uh, the general masses. Let me give you an instance. Now, we are talking governance and we are talking development, right? We are talking democracy. We are not really talking security. But do you know that security is an integral part of what we are discussing? Because before now, the state in Africa, we are actually tools to, to, to let's say, protect regimes, to protect the state. So you are talking about state security. Whenever you mention security, it is, met, it is mentioned in the context of state regime, protecting the regime, state security. But now, the discussion, this, this discussion has moved away from that. We are not talking about human security. So it's no longer about the state. It is about the human people. So my, my point is this. My point is this. We must, first of all, know where we are standing before we start running. If we don't know where we are standing, it will be very difficult to measure how far we have run or how far we have run in governance, in security, in democratic consolidation, in deepening the tenets of democracy in our society, in improving our institutions. You must know where you are standing first. Africa has... African media. Africa's currently, and they are making developmental policies. Who will implement them? In what environment will these policies be implemented? You, 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 you get my point. In what environment, in what context are these policies implemented? So let me, let me, let me point out this. If I still have some minutes, let me point out this. It is high time, it is high time that Africa begin to uh, take strategic, coordinated, and deliberate steps, begin to take deliberate steps towards the attainment of its, its development. I'm not against democracy. I'm a Democrat, full, full Democrat. But you might have question with my definition of democracy if I give it. You know why? Because you might not see some ingredients in the definition I may give. And you may not like it. Or you may also like it. But the summary is this. Whatever mode of governance, whatever system of governance we are adopting, whatever uh, a pattern of administration that we are adopting, we must first of all understand the peculiarities of the African 
from African society, the African nations, the reality of our people, then we now situate that with what we are pursuing, the developmental goals we are pursuing. Everybody has keyed into the sustainable development goals. And I'm a, if you watch, I even have the, the lapel here. I'm a strong advocate of that. But my, my point is this. Do not measure that general global statistics without putting in consideration the local context in which where they are being pursued. For instance, I have, I, I, let's say, if I have war in my country, my developmental space, uh, uh, pace might be different from a country where there is stability. So in, in such context, I will not be looking at uh, ensuring that everywhere is democratic, for instance. I will be ensuring it, that we have security of human beings, human lives and property. Then I'll be talking about food security because those are the basics. I may not join you. I may not join you, you that is developed. I may not join you to be shouting climate change. I may be interested, first of all, in making sure that there is food security, that my people can go to farm, that my people can, can work about freely and do their businesses without fear of intimidation. You, you get the, the angle I'm going. So the developmental priorities of societies should be decided by the visionary leadership of their political class. We should then be informed by the, by the necessary needs of the people. So Africa should be very deliberate, very, very deliberate in deciding the policies they pursue in the effort to attempt development. I mean, strong Democrat, and I will keep saying it, but as you are practicing that democracy, do what we call soul searching. Find out what your society needs as an African society. Find out what the needs of your people are. Then develop policies that will help you to uh, 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 solve those problems not just developing policy. Let me start, let me end with this. You must develop institutions that will be the structure to carry those policies. If you make good policies, and for instance, there is no there is no co co continuity in governance, the policies are, are, are wasted. If you make good policies, and then resources are budgeted to go and, uh, for instance, build roads, build factories, so that you can connect the farm to the market, so that people can uh, uh, cultivate raw material, uh, uh, agricultural materials, bring them to the market, sell, and then they, they, that makes food available, and then that brings down the cost of living for people and all that, and people earn money. Good intention, good policy, but then you, you budget money for it, and you do not follow it up, and the money is embezzled. The money is embezzled, but everybody claps for you because your budget is, is development-oriented. But then the implementation is a mess. So as you are putting good policies, ensure that you are strengthening the institutions, whether by making laws that back them or whatever good process that you will employ to ensure that. So my summary is this. Africa is not operating in isolation. Africa is operating in the context of its, its relationship with internal and external variables. Now, in that, as they are relating and operating in that uh, uh, context, their pursuit for development should be guided by having people-oriented uh, uh, policies, governance policies, and then putting in structures and inserting the institutions to ensure that these policies actually translate to realities of development and good governance for the people. Let me stop with this. Afrique Média. Le monde, c'est nous.